Government business, order of the day number three, Intellectual Property Laws Amendment Bill 2014, resumption of debate on second reading. As the member for Shortland is not here, I call the member for Deakin. Thanks very much, um, Mr Deputy Speaker. I do rise today to talk about important reforms that this government is making in the area of inter intellectual property regulation through the Intellectual Property Laws Amendment Bill 2014. As members of this House are aware, one of the key aims and objectives of the uh, Abbott Coalition government is to reduce, improve and modernise existing business regulation and red tape and to remove duplication where it exists. And it's um, very timely that we have the Parliamentary Secretary uh, to the Prime Minister, uh, Member for Kuyong, who's done an outstanding job in leading that agenda. As many decades of economic reality have taught us, the best and most reliable way to improve our standard of living is to ensure that economic conditions encourage ingenuity and enterprise. A key part of this is to ensure that governments place on business the least amount of regulatory burden as possible so business people can continue to get on with the job of growing their bottom line and creating more jobs. Since the coalition came into government, we have sought to remove or reduce thousands of outdated and duplicate regulations. This includes more than 10,000 pieces of legislation which were removed as part of our repeal day earlier this year. A key factor in determining our long-term economic success uh, is our ability to ensure that our businesses have new markets in which to develop and expand into as well. This often involves breaking down economic barriers between our neighbours and trading partners. And as we've already seen take place through the signing of the landmark trade deals with China, Japan and the Republic of Korea, Australia is well and truly on the path to breaking down those barriers. But the ability of our businesses and the economy at large to make the most of these new markets and opportunities depends on our ability to innovate and adopt new technologies. This is why reforms and modernisation of our intellectual property law is so crucial at this stage of our nation's economic life. The intellectual property system and its regulation of rights is crucial for our ability to engage with the realities of the 21st century and the global economy as it provides certainty for business and encourages invention and investment by business which in turn provides consumers with access to valuable new technologies and services. The Coalition also believes that good regulation can encourage and promote fair competition in the private sector, and this, of course, can only be a good thing. Intellectual property protections are a key part of this. As I uh, say again, they encourage innovation and investment by ensuring that businesses can protect valuable intellectual property that often costs great deals of money uh, to create. One aspect of the uh, reforms before us today is the enhancement of a single market between Australia and New Zealand, which will insist in the strengthening of the already strong economic relations we share with our trans-Tasman neighbours. Under current arrangements, both, most businesses that file for a patent in New Zealand also do so in Australia. In a situation where a business wishes to obtain an identical patent in both of these countries, as is really often the case, the business must make two separate applications and incur the associated extra time and cost that such duplication entails. Part of the reforms before us today will therefore ensure that this process is streamlined by allowing for applicants to go through a single application and examination process for both Australia and New Zealand. This will reduce duplication, making it cheaper and easier for those many businesses who wish to obtain a patent in both jurisdictions to do so in a single manner. Further, the bill will also create a single trans-Tasman trans register of patent attorneys. Uh, under current rules, patent attorneys who assist with making IP patent applications must be, again, registered separately on both the Australian and New Zealand registers should they wish to operate in both countries. The creation of a single registration process under this legislation will of course make it easier for those patent attorneys to practice in both countries, thereby enhancing the services they can provide 
to businesses in Australia and New Zealand wishing to make IP applications in both of those jurisdictions. But another important component of this legislation, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, is the important humanitarian aspects that the bill contains. And I must say it's not often that we get to deal with reforms that simultaneously tackle microeconomic issues in the way of enhancing our trans-Tasman single market uh, initiatives and also making changes that have the potential to make a real humanitarian difference to, per to the lives of those in the developed world. In this respect, the bill does, uh, through the long overdue implementation of the protocol amending the World Trade Organisation Agreement on trade-related aspects of intellectual property, uh, more commonly known as the TRIPS protocol, as proposed by the Howard government. This protocol is designed to help developing countries that are suffering from a health crisis such as malaria, HIV, AIDS and tuberculosis to obtain much needed medication at affordable prices. Of course, many underdeveloped nations currently struggle to either manufacture uh, the pharmaceutical themselves or gain access to the patented pharmaceuticals that are required to treat or control these diseases. Sadly, this often means that many deaths occur that are avoidable. The reforms contained in this bill, therefore, amend the Patents Act to allow Australian generic pharmaceutical manufacturers to supply underdeveloped countries with patented but life-saving medication. Under the proposals, as recommended by the World Health Organisation, generic manufacturers of pharmaceutical uh, will be able to apply to the federal court for a licence to manufacture patented medicines for the express purposes of exporting to developing countries. Patent holders will be provided with adequate compensation for the use of their products under the scheme, but this much-needed life-saving pharmaceuticals will be provided to those in need. So, unlike some proposals aimed at tackling severe poverty and disease in the developing world, this proposal has the potential to have a strong and direct impact on the health and well-being of those suffering extreme poverty overseas, all with reduced costs to the taxpayer. We all know that, Mr Deputy Speaker, in developed countries uh, such as our own, we are fortunate enough to have eradicated or greatly reduced the impact of many diseases. This has obviously been achieved through the development and patent of successful pharmaceuticals, many of which have been able to be widely available to our population through the Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme and Special Immunisation Schemes. Indeed, a strong and robust patent system continues to be important in the development of life-saving medications. Without a properly regulated patent system providing regulatory certainty to those who are involved in the painstaking and expensive task of conducting medical research, uh, th these sort of developments would not happen at the rate that they have historically and that I'm sure will continue. Um, but it is sad to say that a number of the world's population suffers and dies from treatable diseases. 2011. Uh, the last statistics that I was able to, to track down saw approximately 262 million deaths through treatable diseases. And the United Nations estimates that approximately 2 billion people across the globe lack access to essential medicines. Um, so the vast majority of these people come from countries with a limited capability for medical research or a limited capability to fund the acquisition of the medications required to treat those diseases. And that's why uh, the TRIPS protocol is so important. As I've said, with this bill we have an opportunity to do our part in a very meaningful and direct way to assist the lives of those living in third world countries um, by adopting the TRIPS protocol. On another note, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, the bill makes some sensible uh, and minor regulatory changes to current legislation governing uh, intellectual property rights more broadly. The bill will amend parts of the Patents, Trademarks and Designs Acts, 
which will include the repeal of document, uh, certain document retention provisions currently contained within it. Uh, perversely, under the current provisions, IP Australia are required to retain physical copies of trademark, patent and design documents for extended periods of time, often costing taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars in storage and related handling costs. So the amendments contained in this bill will remove those burdensome and archaic rules. Uh, in the same way that the government has sought to remove these outdated paper retention provisions, um, uh, we are also uh, ensuring that a range of costs borne by private businesses with respect to the archiving of documents uh, are also removed. So in closing, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, while I understand that legislation relating to uh, intellectual property laws and regulations and processes may not be headline grabbing or of uh, particular interest uh, to many people compared to much more high profile matters. I believe that this uh, legislation and the changes contained within it represent a significant example of where government can uh, quite sensibly and in a straightforward way uh, provide a stable base for competitive and innovative business practices but also achieve um, some outstanding humanitarian uh, results. So I therefore um, have great pleasure, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, in commending this bill to the House.